Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. I was talking to Dr. Sam Gambier and I said, you know, I got to tell you, I've spent the last year uh, talking about biology and organic chemistry and antibodies and proteins and uh, gooba goblins, whatever the heck that stuff, you know, uh, that's in your blood. You know, I, I'm an engineer. I'm an electrical guy. I, I, I purposely slept through biology because I was not pre-med and, and, and um, you know, proteins and antibodies and, and, and I said, you know, Antibodies seem to be important in monoclonal antibodies, by the way, which they use nude mice to, to create. I said, how big is an antibody? He goes, oh, uh, you know, that's simple. It's uh, 30 uh, microdaltons, right? And no one else knows what it is. Either. I know, what the hell is a microdalton, right? You might as well have said it's 10 barley corns per foot acre. I mean, I had no idea what he was talking about. I go, what is that? He goes, oh, that's its molecular weight. I go, no, no, no. I don't want to know how much it weighs because that's too small to care. I go, how big is it? He goes, oh, it's about 20 to 30 nanometers, All right? Now, we know what those numbers mean. Uh, the latest Pentium from Intel, if I'm not mistaken, is 45 nanometers. So we're a generation, maybe two generation away of line widths here in, in Silicon Valley that are going to be capable of handling antibodies. And, and uh, there's a company called Athometrics that has perfected the technique of binding uh, uh, DNA SNPs uh, uh, to glass, and the same technology can be used to bind antibodies to silicon wires or silicon nanotubes. And the reason you use nanotubes is, is so your blood can flow through it. And so we all hear about nanotechnology, and I'm still waiting for that space elevator or whatever they keep talking about as the use of nanotechnology or, or you know, uh, uh, stain-resistant uh, uh, Levi's. Uh, you know, that's, that's all neat stuff. But here, perhaps, is one of the early uses of, of nanotechnology that, that, that's going to save lives. And it's not going to be inserted in nanobots screwing around your body and swimming around looking for tumors. It's not that at all. It's outside your body. It's a silicon chip. And what do we know about silicon chips? Is they're, they're 50 bucks, then they're 10 bucks, then they're a buck, and then they're a dime, and you put them in your cell phone, you put them in your commode, and, and they'll search for these unique proteins of, 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 of these cancer tumors. And, and, um, and, I, and we already know how this is going to work, right? So the first chip will have one antibody attached, then the next one will have four antibodies, then the next one 16, then 64, then 256. I mean, you, 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 you know where this is going. And so you're going to have the same pace of innovation uh, for early detection. And so what I think happens, in conclusion, is the medical industry flips from chronic care to early detection. It's a 20-year transition. This is not going to happen overnight. But nor did, you know, we used to take cell phones the size of bricks and hold it up to our ears, right, and, and think that we were, you know, and 100,000 uh, wealthy business people used to use those things. But because it was silicon inside, it got cheaper, and over the last 15 plus years, it's gotten to the point where cell phones, you know, uh, slip in your pocket, you break them, you throw them away, and there are a billion of them sold instead of 100,000 of them sold. And, and it's democratized Mo mobile communications, and it's screwed up, by the way, the landline communications business, which uh, uh, there's a lot of battles over. And the same thing's going to happen here. There's a status quo. There's a fee-for-service business. Doctors.